This is an unlocked episode. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting the show on Patreon. This episode is dedicated to Nestor Buenaventura, Richard Frankel, and 2x2 Podcast for becoming our newest Southpaw supporters and helping to make this project possible. This is Sam. This is Paul. And this is Southpaw. In the pursuit of achievement, we're bogged down by the weight of expectations. Modern money-driven society tells us we're aimless and that this is bad. They tell us we must have goals, we must keep score, and we must achieve. But in the case of the archer, an archer can shoot for the pleasure of shooting. Yet when given the task of hitting a bullseye, things change. She must measure herself. She must win. To be content is to be surpassed. Everyone is an enemy. Even her friends are her adversaries. Her life is one of contention, not contentment. Competition, not cooperation. Modern society tells the archer she must have a target, or else. How will she satisfy her ego? She will believe of herself without a target. And without successfully besting her target, she's without worth. She's told, without aim, an archer does not exist. Yet the archer exists regardless, no matter what she's told. The target changes everything. Given a goal, an archer will believe she is inherently useless, and a target will validate her value. If goals are the light, we must assume we are in darkness. If achievement makes us winners, what were we before achievement? To be told you need more is to be told you are lacking. In philosophy, this is called binary opposition, using one idea to oppose another idea, making one clearly better than the other. It's much better to be in the light than in the darkness. But the deception is to make us believe it is one or the other or that things exist on this continuum at all. Like a drunkard who drinks to forget he's a drunkard, the solution begets the problem. What Germans call Verschlimbesserung, or worsening improvement. Expectations convince us we are not good enough. Then once we've bought in, expectations continue to remind us we're not good enough. There's solutions looking for problems. Without goals, keeping track, and winning, are we to believe we'll never grow? Or do we even care about growing? We just care about hitting our targets. This is why humans cheat. This is why we want to win the lotto. We don't want to grow, we just want the results. The archer must aim at herself. To hit a target only changes the target. What must grow is the individual. And this can only happen by letting go. Just as a child does not aim to be an adult, it naturally occurs if we give in to the process. What plant or animal aims for growth? They just do it. Our vision is not clear. Here, Zen teaches us that it is the archer herself that hinders her own ability to grow and live a life of contentment. Her goals are not solutions, they are the obstacles. Releasing the target is a metaphor for releasing the ego. One cannot be skillful while maintaining the ego. One can aim to achieve goals while developing nothing of themselves and be utterly useless. In the modern frenzy, we've lost quiet time, aimless time, goalless time, time to be human, unstructured, spontaneous, and free. In the way we choose to live our lives, what need is there for free will? As goal-centric adults, there's no more making friends, there's only networking. Meeting a friend without a purpose is rare, 
meeting a friend to ask for a favor is common. Rather than deep talk, we want bullet points. We must have a reason for talking, even though talking is one of the traits that define us as humans. In dating, you want to meet someone for the express purpose of having sex, or to marry, or to have babies. The other person is a conduit for your goal, rather than just meeting people and connecting and seeing where that leads. In everything we do, there's an ulterior motive. We complain about how people use people, but in a goal-oriented society, that's what you're supposed to do. What we put in our resumes define our being, results-oriented and goal-driven, but we never mention the things that define our humanity. This is how we think about everything. And for something meant as a system for improvement, it's hard to make a case that this has improved our lives. If suicides are the ultimate barometer for overall satisfaction, then the modern frenzy has only made things worse. Up until the 80s, it was normal to be real, to chill, and lately, we've even given up on that. In Thomas Merton's The Way of Zhuang Su, Zhuang Su writes, quote, When an archer is shooting for nothing, he has all his skill. If he shoots for a brass knuckle, he is already nervous. If he shoots for a prize of gold, he goes blind or sees two targets, he is out of his mind. His skill has not changed, but the prize divides him. He cares. He thinks more of winning than of shooting, and the need to win drains him of power." End quote. To the Taoist, it's all ego. Just let go and shoot. You'll be better off that way. Imagine yourself as a writer. The difficulty in writing will not come from your lack of vocabulary, but in your mindset. Why many have difficulties being a writer is because we think of winning and losing, hitting our goals, like a competitor, like a gamer. We must win flawlessly. We must get the highest score. From the outset, we know how cool our character is. We know the result we want for our character, and we want to get them there as quickly as possible. So imagine writing a story where the hero wins flawlessly and gets the highest score. It'll make for a terrible story. Writing is not about the protagonist being the best or winning the fastest with the fastest score. It's about telling a good story. It's about the process. It's about the middle. Not just for the hero, but also for the writer. It's about living a good life, which is made up of all the things in the middle we keep trying to avoid. Because it's not something we can tally. But if we skip to the end, what life was there? But you are a writer and life is your story. Why we're awful at many things is because our want to be good gets in the way. It's our own misguided and abusive self-coaching. But curious, enthusiastic people just know lots of things and are good at many things. Award-winning scientists don't try to be the best. They just keep learning and researching. Great basketball players keep shooting the ball and acorns just grow. And along the way, they become oak trees. Now that's the show. If you enjoyed this episode and find this type of independent media worthwhile, please consider supporting the show on Patreon. We have a lot more episodes like this one in the works, but need your financial support to keep the show running. Even a few dollars a month goes a long way. No one does what we do, and it's all being funded by you, the listener. In return for supporting us, you'll gain access to lots of bonus content along with our private Discord chat. Even if you can't support us, there's a lot of free bonus content there as well. 
We also have an online store if you want to show your Southpaw solidarity by wearing our swag. You can find all pertinent links at southpawpod.com. And if you can't afford to support the show and still want to help, please leave us a five-star review wherever you listen. This makes it easier for others to find us. And don't forget to share your favorite episodes or the podcast itself on social media. Tell your friends. Until next time, goodbye. South Pulse. Hidden with the left. South Pulse. Sam. Paul. South Paul. South Paul.